finding unknown sides. So using the trig functions that we just learned, we can actually find unknown sides in a right angle triangle. It's important to note that all this trig trigonometry stuff we're doing so far only works with right angle triangles. Let's look at an example. So we have 30 degrees, x, and 3, let's say 3 centimeters. So using our trig knowledge, we can actually find the length of this side because we have one angle and one side. The first thing we want to do is label the sides we're interested in. So this one here is the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. And since we want to reference 30, this side is opposite the 30. So that side there is the opposite. Now, out of all our trig functions, which one uses opposite and hypotenuse? Well, we can see, hopefully, that sine is the one that uses opposite and hypotenuse. So we need to use the sine, the sine function. Remember, it's sine of the angle we're referencing equals the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So let's put in everything we know. So the angle we're referencing is 30 degrees. The opposite side is x and the hypotenuse is 3. Remember, sine of an angle or cos of an angle or tan of an angle is just a number we can put in the calculator. So this is no different to if we had the equation 5 equals x over 3, where we could just multiply both sides by 3, 3's cancel out, and x would equal 15. It's no different. Just do the exact same thing here. So we're going to multiply both sides by 3. The 3's cancel out. So x equals 3 times sine 30. We can actually write as 3 sine 30. You don't have to write the multiplication sign in. And that can just go in your calculator. And you get x equals 1.5 centimeters. So good. Another example. Got another right angle triangle with 71 degrees, x and 4. So the first thing we want to do is label the sides we're interested in. So we're referencing this angle. This is the one opposite the angle. So that must be the opposite side. That's This one is the hypotenuse. So this one must be the adjacent. So which trig function uses opposite and adjacent, so we can write Sokotoa if you're confused. So the one that uses opposite and adjacent is tan, so we need our tan function. So tan of an angle equals our opposite side divided by our adjacent, so let's fill in everything we know. Well the angle we're referencing is 71 degrees, that equals the opposite side which is x divided by the adjacent side which is 4. 1071 is just a number, so we can multiply both sides by 4, where these 4s will cancel out, and we just have x equals 4 tan 71. Using the calculator, that's going to give us 11.62 correct to 2 decimal places. Let's have a look at another example. Got 48 degrees, 7, and x. So first we need to label the sides we're interested in. The one opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse, and the one next to our angle is the adjacent. So which trig function do we need? Which one uses the adjacent and the hypotenuse? Well, that would be cos. So we need our cos function. So cos of an angle always equals the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. We're referencing 48 degrees, so let's put it in. The adjacent side is 7 and the hypotenuse is x. Well, this is a little bit different because this time we have the pronumeral in the denominator. And there's a few ways we could go about this. So let's have a look. We could multiply both sides by x. So the x's cancel out, 
So we have x cos 40a equals 7. Then we could divide both sides by cos 40a. And the cos 48s cancel. So x equals 7 over cos 40a. We can use our calculator here. And we get 10.46 corrected to decimal places. If you have that situation, let's take it again, cos 48 equals 7 over x. When you realize that x is in the denominator, you could just switch them, because if you have a look over here, they end up switching around. It's not very mathematical, but you can do it. Another way is to use this trick. You could say that a half equals 5 over 10. If I put the, if I flip both fractions, 2 over 1, does it still equal 10 over 5? Well, it does. What if I put the numerators on top of each other and then the denominators in the same order? Well, it still equals each other. So there, for that one, I did 1 over 5 equals 2 over 10. What if I go the other way? 5 over 1, does it equal 10 over 2? Well, it does. So 5 over 1 still equals 10 over 2. So how is this trick going to work? Here we could put this over 1, and by using that trick, we could do x over 1 equals 7 over cos 48. So x over 1 equals 7 over cos 48, and x over 1 is just x, so x equals 7 over cos 48 in the exact same way. Thank you.